we go. And we should be recording now. And wonderful. So I think we can start with updates um, and we can start with Patricia telling you a little bit about the Rails 5 upgrade. If that's right, Patricia? That uh, is. Um, so you, you've heard that we've like done a lot of uh, the Rails 5 upgrading. Um, and uh, bug fixing afterwards when we um, when we upgraded the main service. We're also uh, running separate instances for um, our Finnish colleagues. That's the MP Thule that is now also been upgraded to Rails 5. And we've done the same for uh, colleagues in Australia. Um, and now we just have like one instance left that needs to be moved to the new Rails 5 code base and then we're done which is um, great news which means we can um, give a, a look at some of the things that um, are, are not working and we haven't fixed as um, any priority so we know that there are like API issues that need some time to look into um, and uh, have been neglected so far. Um, but yeah, basically we hope that this is uh, gonna be, be done soon. And that means we can return to, to something that is like closer to our normal development of features and not just infrastructure work, which I hope is like um, good news for all of you. I know that there hasn't been like uh, a lot hasn't been a lot of movement in terms of of uh, new features um, coming, but it's been mainly like bug fixes um, that that we've been working on, and that ate a lot of of developer time, but hasn't really you know shown to you as like as a as an improvement in services or, uh, or functionalities. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the big update that we're getting getting to the end of this um, big piece of infrastructure work, um, and hope to kind of resume like the the DMP online development as we've been been used to getting it. We're still um, short of developers. So we, um, we do have some, uh, a little bit of effort from other parts of the University of Edinburgh um, over the next two months to help with some things. And we're keeping our fingers crossed that uh, this, this uh, black hole that is the University of Edinburgh HR system actually spits out um, the uh, job posts soon. Um, so we can rehire and um, and uh, have the, the team go back to full strength and potentially even um, add an additional developer to, to help with the work. Um, so yeah, it, once that happens, you'll hear from us if you know any good developers or have networks to spread those news, we count on you to uh, get, um, get the word out and get us some good people um yeah i think that's kind of the the boring infrastructure update um so far and magdalena can talk to you about um some of the slightly more uh exciting things which is upcoming um meetings and events okay thanks patricia very much um as a wish shame i i hope um some people are not missing this i was hoping this group would be a little bit bigger this morning because um, in one of the recent calls with one of the subscribers, um, it has been raised that in the Dutch community, um, this person was basically wondering, how do you go about your approved templates? For those um, who don't understand this context and I appreciate it, you know, I'm just saying approved templates. So let me just explain. Um, how it works in Netherlands, and uh, there are two funders, uh, NWO and ZO and um, W, uh, I think I pronounced them correctly. 
Um, and how it works, uh, you can have your institutional template. Um, and if this is approved by Defender, you can use this template instead of using Defender template. However, when you come to the tool, um, it might be confusing for researchers knowing what to select uh, because they can, for example, select I am, you know, researcher from TU Delft, but I'm going to do this project for NWO. How it works in the tool is that the NWO template will override uh, the TU Delft template and basically the Fender template always takes precedence and is seen, you know, in the logic of the tool in, in the background as more important. So one of the subscriber uh, was having this question, and I'm not sure how many uh, Dutch users are joining us this morning. How do you go about this? Um, do you speak and explain this uh, to your researchers not to tick the box for the founder template? Or uh, do you do um, loads of explanation before? I think Joachim is having his hand up, so. Yes. Uh, that's uh, one of the questions I wanted to raise <laughs> independently because we've had a, uh, a user recently who, since in Sweden we have the only official template uh, that is in the list uh, is the Swedish Research Council. So uh, this uh, user picked that one, but then she wanted, she, in fact, she had another, her funding was from another funder, but they have approved the Swedish Research Council. But you cannot then in the next uh, uh, screen, you cannot change uh, what's written in the funder. Uh, so it's, uh, you cannot uh, actually name. So if I pick Swedish Research Council in in uh, the select uh, primary funding, and then click click create plan, uh, I cannot change uh, in the field funder in the next screen. So. Uh, and that is what she wanted to do. We can, the advice we gave what was to give a, a, a hint in the grant number that uh, the funder was actually another than uh, the Swedish Research Council. But uh, I mean, preferably it should be possible to, to add and ch or change uh, funder. Uh, even if you're using the, the template of a specific funder. And then also when it comes to our own Stockholm, uh, and this relates more to the case that you're talking about, I think, uh, we have to advise people to, to, uh, not, uh, to tick the box, no, uh, no funder found in, in the list for people to get our uh, local template. Uh, and that uh, not everyone understood that from, from the beginning. Now we've put a, a link to a, a document with the instructions how to go about it. And I hope that will help. But uh, uh, if it could be more obvious in, in the actual web form, uh, I think that would be good too. Um, so I see your Carolyn hand up. So let me just try to first answer your Kim's question. I think, um, well, there are two, it seems two issues and Patricia, feel free uh, to correct me there as well. One thing is about if a researcher, I don't know whether to call it, makes a mistake and just wants to select a new funder, that's not possible. And yeah, you're right. It might be, um, again, I don't know how difficult it would be change some logic. We are planning to, recreate the creation plan wizard page. Um, I don't think we have been really thinking in terms of like how to go about changing a funder because normally when you select the funder, the funder has associated template. So in the first case, when you are saying the researcher would like to change their funder, that normally means that the template would change as well. So that basically would create a whole new create plan page. So I don't know how 
this would work with the logic. I, I think creating a new plan, maybe copying a plan and I don't know. I think, I, I think, I mean, I think that raises a point that in the, in the logic where DMP online comes from, you have a very close funded template mm. relationship and that's not necessarily the case any longer the way I understood from Joachim because like funders are happy to to share templates basically so no one has to redo the work. Um, so I think it's decoupling the the metadata we create as part for or for the for the plan in the funder field from the template. So you can have like a, a template, but then also associate and might just be additional funders. And I uh -huh. think that's basically what Joachim says, basically, you know, I yeah. want the Swedish Research Council and then I want to, might as well be a free text field at that stage that says yeah. like, this is my funder, mm -hmm. this is what I'm going for and it might be any of the other. Um, because if you use your own template, then it's uh, a free text field, as I understand it. You can write whatever in, yeah. in the funder. Uh, and, and I mean, the logic should uh, perhaps be the same because this was not a mistake. Uh, yeah, she, it's she not wanted like to, to have Swedish Research Council template, but she, her funder was, a, uh, was another. Yeah. I think it's it's a point that we should pick up. Uh, I'll I'll make a note. We do have as because we have uh, at least in the Dutch cases we have the um, we will look at the the templates because um, we to be, to do actually some bespoke work to the funders. Be, what they are saying also is like when it then comes to the to the export, they don't want to necessarily export all the questions. They're quite happy to see a subset that is submitted to the funder, but have additional questions for the researcher that the institution finds interesting. So I think we're then like looking at reworking the whole logic of like how much of a, a template is actually tied to a funder and where in the process can we decouple things to still tick funder boxes, but make it like work um, a bit better for the institution. Yeah, I don't, I mean, like it should be. I don't see why you can't always just have an additional free text funder field for every um, DMP that, you know, I mean, the pre-filling is nice, but I, that's like, that basically is the, the easy fix. And then like, um, we should think about doing something smart in the long term. Not that down, sorry. Does that make sense, Caroline? Do you want to add anything? Yeah, Caroline, you-, you oh, Sorry, I was kicked out shortly. <laughs> I just yes. wanted to say exactly the same thing as your, Kim. So I'm also sitting in Sweden and we had exactly the same problem. And I also think that uh, uh, just a free text field would be a good fix for us now, just as a, some as your hand said, if you could add something additionally to the VR as a main funder or template or so either. So it would be sufficient. Yeah. And I think that's also like, you know, it's not unrealistic that a, a funding for um for a project comes from several sources. So having more than a, a funder field. Um actually makes sense especially if you treat the the dmp as as a living document and not just as the thing that you prepare that one time when you're putting it into that one funder on your application so yeah i think there's like um i think that's like dmp online development history that's now not fitting fitting any longer with the the reality of researchers yep We'll note that and um, see how complicated it is to um, just add a free text field. Uh, I, in my head, it's not that difficult, but my developers might have different uh, opinions. So <laughs> let's see where we go from there. You still have your hand, Abiyoa. Can we have something more to add or? Uh, oh, good. Oh, okay, good. good. 
So I'm, I'm not sure like um, what the rest of Dutch users are currently doing about this um, or whether you just communicate currently um, with the researchers, don't take the funder box. Um, if anyone is having their templates approved by the funder um, in, in Netherlands, I don't know whether there are some use cases you could share. If not, um, Chris is having his hand up. Yeah, obviously I'm not in the Netherlands, but related to your point, how do institutions manage where they have two templates that they've created? So how do they distinguish, for example, if they have a PGR template, is how do they alert PGR students to select that template? Because that must be a related issue, right? If you don't have a funder, then how do you determine which of your affiliated, which one of your own templates is provided? Just thinking Sounds you could like you could ask this question to to any institution that has two of their own templates, because I think it's the same issue that 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 we'll be having in the Netherlands trying to have a preference for their templates. It sounds a bit like a, a show and tell session of how do you folks advertise your templates of various rules and workflows to people um, just everyone like brings a bit of their of their material that they usually share on a certain aspect in the mp online i think we're creating a whole another uh, different se um, session type of session there magdalena <laughs> goes to the point of um, of yeah uh, uh, revisiting the the type of events we run and how to make it useful because that's actually it's kind of like one specific question and you can do a show and tell around that where you, where various institutions come and explain how they do it it's yeah it, it is an interesting one and Oh, I, I must come back to that. I feel so bad. I have been doing so much communication around this and I always check all the links, but we have been running these drop-in sessions for so long. I was, I did not blink my eye that the links were just incorrect. I'm just worried people might be in the wrong room. But regardless, um, coming back to Patricia's point, uh, we do have a Mentimeter this morning. So I don't know how many of you know Mentimeter. I love Mentimeter. So hopefully it's not too boring for you. Um, but we would like to ask you, let me start the presentation. Uh, present anyway. We have a few things to ask you about how we run the events. I will share also my screen. I hope it all works well. I don't run Mentimeters very often, um, but I think they're quite, quite fun and good gathering of feedback for us. So Google Chrome. Patricia shared with you a link where you can go and it's www.menti.com and you can use the code I think Patricia shared with you as well, which is 76632772. Um, I'll just give you one or two minutes and then we can start. It's just a very, very uh, quick survey, basically just to ask you, um, how much do you know about our events? How do you want to find out about them? And how can we change them? So we are making sure we're making most of these. And it really seems we, we might start running slightly different ones where it will be like, I don't know, what was the wording Patricia used? The common... Show and tell. Yeah, show and tell. Yeah. And so I hope everyone is logged in and we just might start. And so... I don't know why it's doing in this because it's not really a competition and it's, you know, it's just a survey, but I don't know, Mentimeter likes to do something like this. So again, I don't know why this is showing up. Um, but the question is uh, whether you know which type of online events we, we run. 
So uh, options are yes, no, or not sure. Okay, and seeing the majority of you who voted do know which type of on events we ran. So uh, for those who do not, uh, we ran four types of online events at the moment, and we are hoping we can revisit um, the content and how and when and what we run. So we run drop-ins, we run demo sessions, user groups, and trainings. Um, the drop-ins are these monthly meetings, uh, quite informal normally with a guest speaker and a basically place for you to meet us on a regular basis. And rather than going backward and forward via emails, you have the opportunity really to ask us anything um, during the call. Then we run demo sessions, uh, which hopefully many of you have attended as well. We are running one demo session tomorrow on Google Analytics. And this is basically where we pick up a certain feature of the MP online and we demo um, how this works, as well as showing you um, how we will be improving this feature and gathering your feedback on how it might be improved. We run user groups as well, uh, and we are going to run one on the 8th of June. So if you haven't um, registered, do register, but I will, well, with Patricia, will be sharing the links, I think at the end of this call as well. And this is really a space for you to tell us which direction you want DMP online to go to, what are the request features and functionalities and see uh, what's required in the community as well. Um, this time around, um, we will be running this slightly differently. We are asking you to tell us um, features that are crucial for you. Um, with Patricia, we hope to go through these before and maybe find re relevant GitHub tickets on the, on the roadmap. And um, during the session, we, we hope to do voting, community voting and see what will be the features we'll be proposing that will be worked on um, as a priority. And then we ran the MP online training. So the last one we ran was actually last year, I think it was March or April. And this is really depends on what is needed. Uh, so this can be around the basic uh, features or more advanced features. Um, and I think last year we were running this around the usage of API. So um, it's more formal and it tends to be um, how they so um, another question we wanted to ask you is how do you normally, uh, how do you find the current amount of events we run? Um, is it enough? Uh, too many? Um, you have no idea we are running events. Um, you have suggestions for more suitable events or just one more? I'll give you a few more seconds. Okay, so it's just enough. That's fair enough. Um, and, and we feel on our end as well, it is actually quite um, quite few uh, on a monthly basis, but we, we do want to revisit and ensure that these work well for you. So um, it might be that um, we'll be changing the scope of some and you know the show and tell um, might be a good thing to do occasionally as well. So Another thing I wanted to really ask is whether you need a reminder for the event um, or whether you just tend to go into the newsletter and you just write everything down or whether you know where to go on the website. Um, but okay. Uh, reminder on the day priority event, week in advance. Okay, so it seems people are relatively flexible. Um, and there is no need of a few months planning ahead. So, so that's good to know. Reminder on the day priority event. That's, that's good to know. Um, how far in advance do you prefer to be contacted priority event? Is it the same question? Um, very similar. So sorry. Sometimes it's just when you're actually reading this loud sounds differently. Um, but we, we can just get this one. Um, we know we need to plan ahead at least a month. Okay, there is at least a week. I need to find out on the day. I do not like planning ahead. Okay, so it seems the majority of you uh, like to plan ahead. So having this in your calendar at least a month ahead 
um, is good. So and this is good to know as well. And there is a question, tell us what would you like us to deliver? So like I mentioned, we are already running um, the drop-ins, which is what we are doing now. And we normally have a guest speaker, um, but these are more informal. We run the demo sessions where we go through the features live with you user groups, uh, which we haven't run for some time, but I, like I mentioned, in June we are running one and then we're planning one for autumn where we are gathering the feedback for the feature requests and then um, the training. So you can, I think this is a free, free type of form. You, you can type, but if you can't think of anything, we'll be actually sharing a link um, for the survey as well. I think Joachim is having his hand up as well. If you want to unmute yourself, feel free to do so. But if not, we can we can just go to the next one. Joachim, would you like to? No, okay, good. How often would you like to attend online events? So again, at the moment, I think on average, it's around two a month. Um, there is no preference twice, which I so I deleted. Um, once a month, yeah, once a month seems to seems to work for people. I think yeah, every every two months it might be um, too far apart, as well as the every three three months. So. At least once a month seems to be the preference. That's that's fair enough. And how do you normally find out about the MP online events? Um, does someone just forward you the email and tell you, or do you go to Twitter, or do you just get this from the newsletter, or is it the communications? Um, and I should have specified. So we are sharing this via the GISC email uh, is it a gist email the dmp online user group and then we are sharing one more direct uh, with the subscribers as well so i'm not sure um what works the best but okay it seems that people are subscribed to the dmp online newsletter and that's where you find out as well you get the direct email from comms as well okay that's good to know <laughs> someone tells me um yeah. Okay. Um, so surprisingly, Twitter is actually on the fifth place. Um, so it's it's just good to know um, what people check. But we, we do have one more survey, which we'll be sharing um, with all of the subscribers and potential subscribers, just to ensure that we are uh, sharing the information well prior to events. Uh, so next one. Um, I, I was just wondering whether there are some good online events uh, you might have joined in the past or, you know, we, we have been working, probably the majority of you have been working from home now for more than a year. Um, so I, I assume you, you joined quite a few online events as well. And if you have anything in particular you think was really good, um, I was just wondering whether you could tell us um which ones it was and whether there was anything really um good we could learn from or whether you have any further suggestion if you if you can't think of anything just yet it's fine um we have this question as well in another survey uh, which we'll be running as well but if you if you can think of something i'll just give you a few more seconds before i move um, but again, I, I, I don't know what people prefer, um, whether you like to make them quite interactive, um, whether you like to go into the breakout rooms or work together and um, I have more quizzes uh, to answer, but I'll, I'll just leave this. Um, okay, there is actually an answer. Um, nothing specific, but I like sessions where users share experiences and make suggestions for improvements. 
Um, and yeah, I think that's always valued uh, by the community. Don't know whether there is anything more. I'll just give a few more seconds before I move. There is like, I, I couldn't think of something very specific myself, but again, I, I just think we have, we are quite lucky to have such a wide community of users um, from, you know, um, different institutions and countries um, and in different roles. Maybe some of you might have attended something really interesting uh, we could learn from, but like I said, we'll be sharing one more survey on which, where you can just take your time and think of this. So I'll just uh, move to another question, uh, which is, do you have any further thoughts? It's very open. It requires a lot of thinking, which again, I appreciate you might not want to do on Tuesday morning or would prefer to do this um, in your spare time, but I'll, I'll just give you some time in case someone is typing. I don't want to, I don't want to move too quickly. Um, but I think um, with Patricia, we can take away um, the suggestion about, you know, people sharing more. How do they go about certain features and how do they use them? Um, we, we, with Patricia, we don't know. Um, so it's really, unless someone tells us, we, we know how the tool works, um, but it's always um, quite valuable. So for us to just learn, how do you go about certain features um, and what are your practices and policies and ways of communicating this with your researchers. Okay, I, I won't be dwelling on this one too much. Um, but like I said, on the 8th of June, uh, we're planning to run the DMP online user group. Um, it will be around half day with some breaks in between. So I would like to definitely invite you. I hope um, quite a few of you have um, already joined there. I'll stop sharing now and we can just look at what else is there left from the agenda. Um, Okay, so we already mentioned this. Um, the user group is on the 8th of June um, and we really hope that you'll be able to join us. Um, and I think Patricia will be able to share the link with you as well. I'll have a quick look in a case you haven't seen. There we go. See you as well, wonderful. So you can see the agenda. Um, you can submit your issues. Don't forget to submit the issues um, before the user group when you're attending, um, because this is the way how we'll determine on what we will vote. Um, I seen Patricia already shared with you that there will be Delft webinar on the 15th of June. Um, Patricia, is this about the Surf Connects collaboration? Yes, that's uh, um, one of two webinars um, that we're doing as part of our um, funded project with the um, you know, with the TU Delft on integrating DMP online with um, other institutional systems. Um, I'm not entirely sure what we'll be talking about yet. I'll need to figure that out. Uh, um, what exactly the content is, but it is designed as like a, um, a way to to um, get feedback from from more institutions and and take this beyond just a collaboration between us and Delft because the whole idea behind the project is that um, it is something that like whatever has worked for Delft they would share with the wider community and we would obviously when we are like should we implement something as part of that we always want to make that um, reusable for as many customers um, as possible. We're, uh, we, yeah, we usually plan things like these. So the whole community profits and also we don't have to um, keep tra track of um, that many customizations for in individual institutions. So that will be like a, um, an opportunity for the wider community to in engage with 
uh, the ideas and plans that we have around the that that project and to see what Delft uh, is doing and planning to do and feed, feed, feeding back if that's um, interesting to to you and how you could see that fit uh, in in your own institutional setup. So yeah, just plugging that in case you know. I think there's a there's a definite a, a separate uh, email list for for that. But uh, if you're not on that one, um, you now know how to sign up to to attend that. Okay, thank you so much, Patricia. Um, and our April a recording is live on YouTube, and there is a whole playlist in case you want to catch up with some of the MP online drop-ins from the past months or years. And as usual, um, we would like to invite new guest speakers. So in a case you want to take part, uh, feel free to email us at dmponline at dcc.ac.uk um, and we can schedule uh, when you could be our guest speaker. Um, I don't know whether there are any more questions at this point. If not, um, I think we can just close up. So do not forget to follow us on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, and subscribe to our monthly newsletter and our mailing list. Um, next drop-in meeting is on the 24th of June, 2021, at half past 10. Our guest speaker will be Shona from Wageningen University. Let me triple check this link. Um, I'm just opening my Zoom with all the upcoming events. So I just want to make sure we are sharing the correct link. And 293, 293, okay, so good. And this is the correct link. And I'll need to ensure I'm using this one link across all the channels, like I mentioned. Um, I, I was hoping we could just start using a one link for these drop-in sessions. Um, and I think this is where the confusion arise before. So for which I do apologize, um, but we'll be sharing the recording from this session as usual. Um, and we will be sharing the server, uh, survey with all of you after the call as well. I would like to say a big thank you for all the attendees and uh, for all your comments and participating in our quick survey to Patricia uh, for running the session with me. And I hope that we will see many of you tomorrow in the DMP online demo session. Brilliant. Goodbye, have a nice day. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.